Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. This is the Wix online meeting number 130. Rolling into July, we skipped last week, so we're kind of offset our two weeks because last week was a holiday. And uh, while Bob and I, and I think Sean said he would be here, we didn't expect uh, Jacob and John to make it necessarily. So here we are this week. Let's go ahead and jump into what we're doing. Uh, we'll do triage first. Uh, there's a few bugs because it's been a few weeks. Um, so we'll walk through those and get them all assigned to the right places. Then I want to talk about um, some of the things that have been going on Wix devs and what I think will be the new updated baselines for Wix 4. Um, we're going to look for feedback here. I'm going to state these should be our baselines, but of course it's going to be you know feedback, whatever people think we should do. If these are bad ideas, we'll do that. And then, as always, we'll do questions and comments at the end. Uh, this meeting is recorded for those of us that aren't with uh, here with us right now. So let's go jump straight into triage before we talk about Wix 4. Bob, you ready? Engage. Engage. All right, I like that. All right, so uh, what did you say, 11? Um, 11, open, too closed. All right. Uh, update error message to ensure Wix toolset is installed. Wix 4. Ah, right. So he recommended we point to a different page until, well, about Wix 4. Mm. That's okay for a while until we actually then release the... Um, yeah, I'm a little wary of, uh, of messing around with the templates. Um, maybe it means we should, you know, sh we should have a landing URL for that. Yeah, that's probably what it means. Let's, why don't we give this to me and I will play around with this a little bit. It basically, this is we need to kind of clean up the user experience, which isn't completely surprising. Um, we kind of knew we That's fair. And we're still yeah. kind of working our way through it all. All right. Uh, Visual Studio 2017 build server support. Uh, yeah, so this was... Um, build server doesn't support installing Votive, which gives you the redirect targets, which makes everything work. Instead, if you update your project file to match the new project files, you don't need the redirect targets, and everybody's in a better place. So there we go. Um, heat fails when, or yeah, heat fails when it contains hard links. Guess that wouldn't surprise me. Uh, we can toss that in four. Um, install message references options button even when suppress UI is false. Oh, the look string. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. I guess we can fix it in four. Someone could look at that in four. It's, a, it's not. I don't know how to solve that, but yeah, two different strings, I guess. That's kind of annoying, but it's probably what the answer is. Could be works. Yeah. Fixed in four. If someone wanted to go about doing that. Um, subfolder configuration that created in application root directory. Yeah, okay, whatever. I guess this is support didn't come back and I forgot to tell you support. That can go. Wix hangs on saving a project in VS twenty thirteen. Is this that Yeah, this is a dupe, right? Yeah, I think so, but I went looking and could not find um the actual dupe, although maybe it's thirty two eighteen. That's what he said. Oh yeah. So cool. Dupe. Easy. These are going. Although, to well, no. See, there was a, a a newer bug than that. Okay, but it's still a dupe. I, there is one out there. So. Uh, yeah, I agree. But I think this one should be a duplicate of. Yes. I'll settle for thirty-two eighteen. Yeah. Wix projects do not build with .NET build. Hmm. Why don't you give this to me in four O? I I want to take a look at this, especially given what we're going to talk about coming up. Not sure how much I care about us building a .NET build. Maybe a lot, maybe none, but I'll take a look at it and see why. Uh, might be straightforward. Light. Right. The number of processor environment is set to an invalid value. Really? <laughs> that is an awesome value. <laughs> yeah. Now, notice this is a Windows Insider build, and there's another bug in here related, I think, to the same build. Um, so I'm... I'd like to. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to do about. It. And we should we should not hang get into a bad place when the number of processors fails to parse as a number, basically. Right. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, just defense on our side, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. So uh, we'll do that for a workaround. Using dependency extension can lead to incomplete uninstall. Okay. Yeah, if you mess up your dependencies, you can do that. Well, I think okay. the assertion is that he's not messing them up. Um, I requested logs. I haven't really had a chance to dig in. Um, unfortunately, that it was just a dump of logs. So, okay. Uh, what would you like to do with this bug? <sighs> I have no choice but to say I need to take it and look at the logs, right? No. You can say you don't care, but you know, you can probably tell that to this guy so he knows that you're not looking at it. I'm, it's just where it's at now. It's like uh, <laughs> you've moved it along, but I mean, you could say you won't get to it for two weeks. And that's fine. We can come back to it in two weeks. So anyway, we can let it float for two weeks, and then we'll come back to it next week, and you make a more solid decision. I'm fine with that too. I'm still signing up to investigate. That's fine. I'll I'll assign the bug to myself, but leave it untriaged. Okay. Um, XML config failed when XML target oh XML file exists but is empty. Hmm, that's cool. Could be fixed in four. I can see it not handling empty files correctly. Yeah, it doesn't. Okay, cool. It could be fixed. Error building simple setup. This is the other Windows Insider bug. Oh, some problem with ice. So, yeah, I don't really. This bug can just get closed. They don't even fill the template. <laughs> I just don't. Uh, well, so th this is my. Th this was my comment originally about the Windows Insider. Yeah, these are you know essentially beta builds. I don't know how much. Even in the brave new world, I don't know how much we're supposed to, you know, bend over to to support beta builds of Windows. I mean, historically, we've been kind of like, uh, you know. Yeah, whatever. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> it's like, I don't care. Um, uh, yeah. This is ICE 1, too. Is the ICEs are failing. You're like, yeah, Windows installer yeah. is in a weird place that validation is not working. That's what this is. Yeah. So I think we should tell them, hey, yeah, validation is not working. Maybe Windows installer doesn't work well, or validation doesn't work well in this preview build. Try our normal Windows installer or Windows 10 build and let us know. Yeah. And open a new bug and fill out the template correctly next time. <laughs> right. Basically, yeah, we don't care. Should um, we just wait for it to fail in consecutive builds before we even want to look at it? I want it to go away. I don't want it to be here in two weeks. If we don't push it away, it's not It's not going to... Basically, I want to tell them, you have a preview build. That failure is in the ICES, which means it's a failure talking to the Windows installer, which is part of Windows. So go try a normal Windows build. If it reproduces on the normal Windows 10 build, well, honestly, go take a Windows, because this isn't even ours. <laughs> I'm not sure what we can fix in here anyway. I mean, I guess, should our standard response to a beta build be... We, we're not even going to look at it if it's not breaking in multiple beta builds. Like, if it's fixed in the next one, then, you know, we shouldn't even care. All right. Okay, so you, you're saying basically, yeah, it's a Windows 10 preview build. Try a non-preview build. That should be our response. Open a bug sure. if this happens in a non-preview build. Well, except, you know, the so the next level, they, they broke in, they, they've broken Windows installer before. Yes. Right. In in creators update, they change something with the templates or the loc. Right. So if you don't include um, loc strings for the stock messages, the template is the template now shows up in template form. Yeah. You know, with you know bracket one, bracket two. Oh, because they changed behavior somewhere. So. Um, yeah, obviously this isn't this isn't our responsibility. I I think the question is, can we you know, can we push back on Windows and say, yeah, this is a bug, and you should fix it. And I know that's not our job. I'm just you know. 
and I don't know how to report the bug even. Is there a user voice equivalent? I, I, I'm not on Insider. I, I assume the Insiders have that feedback app. I see links to it, and every time I click on it, it says, you're not a Windows 10 Insider. You can't use this app. And I'm like, fine. Um, so, so yeah, I, I, all right, fine. So the answer is this Or this we ask this person to do it. Yeah, yeah no, we, we tell say, this person, look, that component is yeah. part of Windows. You're going to have to go take it up with them. Okay. And, you know, you're on Insider preview build, so go tell Windows that they broke this because this is part of yep. Windows. And I totally appreciate that they can't tell because it's light.exe that's telling them. And, yeah, 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 yeah. And if this happens more often, which it may, given the way Windows is going, we may have to build up our error messages around, you have used a Windows component. It failed. Go take this issue to Windows. Have a nice day. Um, yeah. So that they quit opening bugs against us. All right. So I think Sean has a point there. We need to go push this at Windows. Yep. Okay. Harvesting a DLL does not harvest the app config. That does not surprise me at all. Add support for MAT for Wixel files. I don't even know what that would mean. How do you do that? No clue. Cool. We could toss it in 4X and someone could do that. Or or do we suspend it? Or what do we have? What is it called? Be like, I don't know. Yeah, put it for us. Maybe someone will know what Matt is at some point and be like, yeah, let's go dig into that. It could be interesting because I took a quick look at it. It's like machine translating your files. So it's like, I don't know what we have to do to teach it, Wixel. So Maybe. we have to, okay, so it's a tool and we have to somehow extend it to support Wixel. Not, we have to extend Wixel to support Matt. I, whichever way it is. Oh. You know, I, I don't know. Like, They're two very different ways, so I'm kind of interested. I mean, I, I, no, yes, but they, in the end, the end result is doing something to support Matt, <laughs> to me, right? The, the That next level of detail is interesting when it comes to actually doing the work. Um, but, yeah. So, yes, it's interesting as soon as someone digs one layer down and goes... <laughs> Why don't we toss it at 4x and ping this guy and say, "Do you know what that actually mean? Like, what would actually be necessary?" <laughs> Although he's going to say, sure. "Go look at the documentation." I'm sure. Well, it's, I, I looked at that documentation, and that landing page is like, "Here's how you get Matt." There's nothing about what it is, how it works, except by watching videos. I'm like, uh, "Ain't nobody got time for that." Give me some text. Tell me what I need to do. And I didn't see anything about, you know, how you extend it. So hey, a video. Sheepers. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, hey, it'd be cool if it just worked. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, all right, but let's toss it for us to see what happens. And, yeah, who knows? Cool, I think we're done with bugs. No. Wait, yes? No. I'm not lost. The extension manifest is invalid. So what happened when I refresh? Wow. 11 minutes ago. That's why I didn't see this. Download the file, it opened, gave me a message. This message. I don't even know what to say to this person. That is not a great bug report. They did all the work to delete the entire template and then told us nothing. Yeah, just just close this. <laughs> like, there's no information in this bug. Goodbye. <laughs> Jeepers. Thank you for wasting our time. All right. Hey, we're one bug ahead. Cool. I think we're done bugs. Right? I'm not missing anything else? I don't think so. Cool. All right. So let's talk about a little bit about Wix 4 baselines. Uh, again, these are, you know, I'm drawing a line in the sand of people like have really strong opinions. I'd love to discuss those. But this is after playing around and thinking about it for a while um, because I finally had time to step away from Wix 3X long enough to breathe, although not a lot since I'm really busy over in Fire Giant land. But, um, and think about Wix 4 and basically kind of. Uh, look at the lay of the land and some of this have bounced off of Bob of the well, why don't we just do this and Bob's like why bother I'm like oh yeah we could just cut all of that so uh, let's talk about what it would mean 
for Wix 4.0 baselines, for example, supporting only Visual Studio uh, 2015 and 2017. That's not supposed to be V2015, it's supposed to be VS2015. So basically we drop support for 2010, 2012, 2013. Um, part of this is from the fact that the, extend the votive extension is getting very little pickup in 2010, 2012, 2013 compared to 2015, 2017, like, I don't know, order of magnitude less. Um, and uh, literally, and so um, thinking, cool, if we don't, we could just cut our tail on those. 2015 is more like 2017 um, than 2010, which could just generally make life a little easier and just generally less things. So um, that mostly means the extension, we wouldn't bother having it support Wix 4 um, and the outside of 2015, 2017, things like that. Um, also thinking about supporting um, only 2017.3 to build the Wix tool set. Now, dot .3 is not out yet, so this is kind of looking forward, but this is mostly about the third bullet point. But looking at just doing the work to um, narrow the build tools necessary to do that. Um, sorry, the and the reason I'm bringing that up, because I forgot to mention this, is that um, Dropping Visual Studio 2010, 2012, 2013 from Wix 4 also means dropping DUDL libs and WCADL libs and things like that, so we don't support C++ of those versions either, just supporting C++ 2015, 2017 with our, um, for building custom actions and things like that. Um, but that's really, that's really it. I mean, the, that's the bulk of, of what it means for us to support a version of Visual Studio is one votive and yeah. two SDK. Right. And so. I believe in my experiments that I've been able to build 2015 compatible libraries with 2017.2. I need to verify it with 2017.3, but I'm expecting that I'm still going to be able to build a library that is 2015 compatible that uh, using 2017. That's using the the... V140 XP toolset? Exactly. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Um, I That's forgot. kind of interesting. Yeah. I, th I, I need to verify that with dot .3, um, and dot .3 is supposedly not that far away, um, and so I'm like, cool, we could just standardize here um, and get to a common set of tools. So, and, and a single set of tools, instead of the complexity we have on our build system now around all these other things. We may need to bring that complexity back when they break library support again, but at least we could live without it for a little while. So the next thing is uh, we're going to the proposal is to keep the .NET Framework 2.0 support. I know 2.0 support for MBA and DTF. Um, basically, keep them as they are. Don't break them. They already support .NET Framework 2.0, and the reason is that those two things travel with people's code. They're redisted, and therefore they should have the broadest reach. So they'll run on 2.0 all the way up to 4, uh, you know, 4 whatever, using that legacy switch or whatever that is. And basically, this is how MBA, MBA and DTF work today, so we won't break any of that. The next thing is a departure from what I was originally thinking um, and had already done, but I'm looking at moving everything else that is not MBA or DTF to .NET Standard 2.0. Um, and... That means the the difference from where we were before to now is that means that our minimum .NET framework for the Wix tool set would be 4.6.1, uh, where before we were getting away with the minimum tool set of 4.5, I believe. So this would move the minimum Wix, the minimum .NET framework required for uh, the Wix tool set build tools, so your build machines, to 4.6.1. Um, there's a lot of little things that moving the .NET standard enables. One of them is the idea of being able to do cross-plat, which I bring up because uh, we've had some people interested in coming from Linux that have done enough work that we could possibly get Wix working on Linux build machines um, for uh, with them doing the work by plugging in a couple executables to replace executables that are already in Wix. And it should just work and these guys have actually tested it and verified that it generally does work. So moving the .NET standard puts us on a 
um, a known place to go cross-platform. I know you could be thinking, why bother with cross-platform and stuff like that? Um, the thing is that as we roll forward, I think there's going to be more opportunities for Wix to move beyond MSI. It's a goal. And because the timing of this has worked out really well, these guys have shown up at the same time that I've been playing with this, I'm like, this is probably a great opportunity for us to see how this cross-plat goes for building MSIs on Linux uh, machines. And so that seemed very cool. So the .NET Standard 2.0, as I understand it, uh, well, it's definitely supported in .NET Framework 4.6.1, and from my discussions with uh, Mono people, it sounds like Mono 5.2 will support uh, .NET Standard 2.0. They have partial support in their um, releases now, and I think it's 5.2 and not 5.0.2. Um, either way, it's I think it's 5.2, and their statement was that they would have 5.2 uh, towards the end of the summer. So that means that by the end of the summer-ish, even by the end of the year, um, .NET Standard 2.0 support would be available on Mono, which fills in all the blanks that we need to have Wix run, because that's where they have it running today. So what this does is basically modernize our, our C-sharp platform onto where the .NET framework is moving um, a lot of their focus, cuts our tail on Visual Studio support for our native code, making our lives easier there, standardizing our build tools on Visual Studio 2017.3, so you only need one thing installed to build all these different, um, to build to all these different targets. And MBA and DTF will still be .NET Framework 2.0, which will be great for our users and that they can use um, the DTF and MBA as they do today on .NET Framework 2 for those people that are you know, still out there or don't want to have to install a, a .NET Framework be for whatever reason, if they can verify it's in their framework. Um, and it creates nominal amounts of pain for us in those areas because we still have to deal with 2.0 uh, constructs. But uh, DTF is really stable. Don't have plans to change it a lot. Um, and MBA changes only as much as Burn does. There's not a lot of code in it otherwise, so it's not too bad being on .NET Framework. So that's kind of the rationale, the thinking of bringing Wix 4 up and essentially cutting a lot of the deeper edges. Um, and we'll be able to, like I've been working with the the SDK MS Build support. I don't even know what you call them. The SDK MS Build, MS Build SDK targets. They need a name for this. Essentially, uh, the new clean MS build that you can use with .NET standard projects and such, and it really simplifies our build process a lot. Um, so that has a lot of value, uh, especially when we move from build to build to build. Um, as Bob has sent also a thing to Wix Dev saying, hey, if we just use the Visual Studio development environment that sets all this environment variables, then we can get rid of all this other code out of our build system. So essentially what we're doing is trimming, cutting, and making our lives a lot cleaner in Wix 4 and adding Linux, <laughs> kind of on the side. Um, and those of you on 2010, 2012, 2013 basically will be know that your feature set is whatever is in Wix 3 today. Not going to change. Not going to move forward. Now the biggest downside is that you know currently we we support building using Visual Studio down to 2010. So it means you need to be on, you know, what is probably going to be a fairly modern version of Visual Studio. And if we kind of embrace that idea, I suspect we'd, we'd continue to rely on, you know, being on the current, you know, current the then Studio. current. Yeah, Visual Studio. So, you know, I don't know, VS 2019, whatever they do for the next version. Yeah, I, I don't know where that's going right now. Um, we're on 2017, and it's been rolling forward. Um, and the only reason I'm even talking about 2017.3 explicitly is that it's the place where all the .NET Standard 2.0 tooling comes together cleanly in Visual Studio. Um, you can do it all now by getting, you know, a build here and a thing there, but if you move to 2017.3, it's supposed to have everything all wrapped up with a nice bow. So you should be able to go, to the idea being, you should be able to go to a clean machine, put 2017.3 on it, and build everything. Um, now, as they roll forward, if they break things, maybe that will prove to be a bad idea, which basically says that moving to 2017 is a bad idea. So I, I have a hard time thinking that they're going to do that. Um, but we'll see. Right.
Yeah, Jacob, we've we've what basically what I've come to and to your point explicitly is that I've we've spent a lot of time in twenty or in Wix three X um <laughs> maintaining backs compatibility and just brain cycles to do that, which I think is important in three X, but we need to cut that line. So we we need to move forward in four O and uh, the conversation I think where Bob and I kind of came to, and I don't know, I think it was probably Bob that said it, um, was that he's like, look, if you're on Visual Studio 2013, what's the chances you're going to move the Wix 4? And I was kind of like, oh, that's a good point. If you're on Visual Studio 2010, what's the chances you're moving the Wix 4? Uh, zero? I mean, like, really, are you going to go through the work of moving your code base from a Visual Studio 2010 to a 20, you know, to a Wix 4 from Wix 3? Seems highly unlikely if you're... And keep... And keep VS 2010. That's the and thing. Keep, you know, and keep 2010. If you're moving, if you're moving forward, you would probably also move forward on on your Visual Studio. I mean, you know, yeah, to an extent. It just it's it seems, and yeah, you know, I was convinced based on the numbers from uh, VS Marketplace. Yeah. Um, you know, just the the number of users just drops so quickly after you know VS 2015 or before. VS 2015, rather, that it's just like, you know, this is, it's a lot of work, and, and it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really benefit a whole lot of people. If, if we were talking, you know, huge, huge changes in, in the code that, you know, that would make it really difficult for someone to, to, you know, manually use it, you know, without pre-built libraries. Then I'd be okay. Well, you know, maybe we should do something, but you know, it's just, it's just not the case. And of course, there's always Wix 3.11, 3.14. If you <laughs> and 3.14, yeah, you want to get there to go help you get to the future. Yep. Although, yeah, if you no, you're right. It's 3.11 because if you're doing 3.14, that means you're wor you're working your way to four. So it'll be 3.11. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so that's kind of the thinking on uh, the baselines for Wix 4. Um, those of you on Wix devs know I've been kind of, you know, taking it a little easier on Wix lately, mostly because I've been trying to catch up with everything else. But uh, it looks like the stars are aligning that there will be a lot more focus on Wix 4 um, in August through the end of the um, year to move a lot of that stuff forward. So I want to kind of get these proposals out to people, and then we'll go from there. So for the set of people here, it doesn't sound like we're getting any um, pushback. Um, and we will, uh, I will uh, point to this probably uh, on Wix devs or such so that people can see that this is what we're looking at doing. I just don't think that's going to be a problem because 461 is, you know, pretty much everywhere now. It's been pushed enough. So, all right. Things people want to talk about. Other stuff going on? Knowing that I think August will probably be more more interesting. Um, a build will come out of 3.14 very shortly. I actually tried to kick it off over the weekend, and then I found that I broke it. Um, <laughs> um, I, I forgot that we don't build the zip projects as part of the release build, which I've forgotten, so I have to go. Uh, or that we only build the zip projects as part of the release build, and because I deleted some files, they're not in the zip file. So anyway, I will get those fixed, um, and then we will have a 3.14 and a Wix 4 build out in the not-too-distant future. Just a quick update on that. In case you're wondering where the build was, I, I was recovering from Wix 3.11, and then I <laughs> messed up a, deleted a couple .exe configs that we don't need anymore and forgot to remove them from the zip files. All right. Sounds like it's pretty quiet out there until two weeks from now. So we're on this two-week schedule. So adjust your calendars if you had reminders. So in two weeks from now, that would make it uh, July 25th. Hey, halfway to Christmas. Is that right? Or is it June, halfway to Christmas? No. All right. Five months to Christmas. Uh, two weeks. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. Bye.